So I want to do a quick lesson on why guitarists sometimes capo the third fret and detune their third string to F sharp, it's particularly for Renaissance lute music. That's what this discussion is mainly about. So for example, I just put out that um, Ricciacar by Francisco de Milano. You don't have to play Renaissance music with detuning your strings or with a capo. All of this music works without it. If I put myself into regular guitar tuning, so this is regular guitar tuning, I can still play this piece. It's all very possible to play still, and some players might prefer that. And for some pieces, it might even work better sometimes. But the thing that you want to remember is this, is that a large majority of lute music, particularly English and some Italian and French um, lute players, used a tuning very similar to the guitar, except that the third string was tuned down. If you're playing um, music by a lute player who used like six choruses or six strings, um, like Dowland, although Dowland used uh, seven and eight string lutes sometimes, but you essentially can read the original lute tablature without any change to the instrument. Some um, Baroque music, they get into like many, many strings on the, on the lute and tunings, particularly like some of the German tunings are very, very different than the modern guitar. So that ends up being a real transcription. But in things like Dowland or Damilano, you can just detune that third string and suddenly you can play with his original fingerings, which is really important because a lot of these lute players, they wrote the music themselves, right? And so when they were figuring out the music, they played with that tuning. Therefore, the music works very well with that tuning. Not always, but a lot of the time. Particularly if you're in, your, if you're in a key with lots of F sharps. When you have um, an F sharp, usually you'd have to fret it like this. But when you have it as an open string, it can be very, very useful because suddenly it means that you don't have to fret that note. Now, of course, if you have an open G, you have to suddenly fret that. But if you're in, the, in a key like A major, you're not gonna have a lot of open Gs anyway, because they're gonna be sharp. So using lute tuning is incredibly useful and it opens up a wide variety of music and music that sometimes it just isn't possible to play with regular guitar tuning. So that's one of the reasons why we do it. Now, using the capo is an interesting thing. Like in this particular piece, you, this is what the piece sounds like without the capo. Let me put the capo on. Sorry, one more time. It has a little bit um, of a lighter feel, um, mainly because the, um, the key has been changed and it's just higher in pitch overall. But it has a little bit of a lighter flavor to it. Also, the nut of the guitar makes open strings sound quite a bit brighter and um, than, than fretted notes. So it doesn't end up sounding as plucky. And the modern guitar is also built just like the grand piano to be um, louder and more resonant. And sometimes like in the Spanish kind of, um, modern Spanish guitar kind of realm, putting the capo on make, means that all the notes that you play are gonna sound fretted because this is essentially fretted notes here. It's a little bit higher, a little bit more delicate. Um, and so it might sound a little bit more plucky, a little bit more pure sounding. Um, it doesn't have that, the lush dark sounds that you get in the lower register. And you don't get a sound difference with, between the fretted notes and the notes that are open. So it kind of equalizes the sound, which might be particularly attractive to some lute music. Um, I think pieces like this in particular,
benefit from that kind of pure and high register and um, just makes it sound a little bit more charming, a little bit more um, lively, um, resonant, plucky, um, lots of good things that might suit this particular music more. But like I said, um, lots of loop music can work in regular tuning and sometimes even better, but um, it's really to your benefit to, to learn how to tune your guitar in this way. Um, it's only a small change. Instead of A being on the second fret, it's on the third fret. So you just move everything up one. It's a really easy adjustment. It might freak you out at first because you're so used to fretting notes on the second fret for A, but now they're there. And you might also be weird that whenever you see an F sharp, it's gonna be an open string, which you're not used to. But like I said, there's thousands of pieces in this tuning and it really opens up the world. And even like um, the Royal Conservatory books, for example, have really adopted it. And by the time you get to grade four onward, I think lot, most of the early music is detuned. And so it's just a skill that students really should learn in order to play this music because it, it's to your benefit, makes the pieces easier quite often. Um, that said, um, Try it out, explore, see if you like it. Um, try to get some different flavors out of the guitar. Try capering. Sometimes different frets are useful. You don't have to imitate the lute by going on the third fret. You can try um, different frets if your guitar resonates differently or more pleasantly on different frets. But um, I'm very used to just doing this, so you'll see me doing that in a lot of early music. In fact, if you look at um, that duet I did with Doug Hensley, the Valderabano, I'm fretted and he's not. That's because sometimes the duets in that time period were made with different instruments. So one person would be playing um, on like an alto lute and one person would be playing like a tenor lute and they'd be tuned differently. So like playing with that capo and with that tuning actually allows you to play those duets as they're originally intended um, without having to transpose a whole bunch of stuff, which might, might mess up the fingerings altogether. In other cases, like that Dowland that we played, there's actually one section in Lord Chamberlain that can't be played with normal tuning. It's just, it's too awkward, it's impossible. You need that open F, F sharp. So, as I said, um, enjoy it, try it out, and um, it's a skill that you definitely want to learn.